Tra la 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 la. Oh, thanks, Dad. You're gonna like this. What is it, a birdcage? Here's Johnny. <laughs> This is a computer. C'est l'heure de Trax. Quelle horreur You would take your kid to the movies, and it would always be a Disney movie. Uh, it was probably Snow White. Um, and it was entrancing and huge, and I wanted more. And uh, I later became a habitué of the Saturday matinee. Il colore mi sono ispirato a più di un film, veramente. Mi sono ispirato a, a Biancaneve e i Sette Nani a, e anche a, ai vecchi film di John Ford con questi famosi tramonti rossastri e questi colori accesi. E poi appunto Biancaneve e i Sette Nani, anche quella con i colori contrastanti, molto interessanti, Walt Disney in genere. E, e quindi... Volevo riportare questo, rifare questo tipo di colore dopo tanti anni che non si era mai fatto. A casa avevo paura quando avevamo una casa molto grande con un lungo corridoio che portava dalla stanza da pranzo fino alle stanze da letto dove dormivamo noi fratelli. What 
What's going on? I don't know. Maybe there's an overload on the wires. Carlo! Yes? Hey, where's the main fuse box? In the storeroom. The door's at the end of the hall. But don't go there. Don't worry. I just want to check the fuses. All right. But keep talking so I know where you are. I will. Facevo questo percorso di questo corridoio, mi ricordo, mi faceva molta impressione. Forse per questo nei miei film ci sono tanti corridoi, tante, tante con le tende, che c'erano queste tende, quindi ogni volta si vede che ripercorro questo percorso. svegliarsi la notte al buio, eh, ti viene voglia di gridare, io gridavo e nessuno veniva. Sept ans, six, sept ans, je sais pas exactement. Je suis parti louer, je crois que c'était Superman 2 ou 3, et je me suis retrouvé avec Shining. Here's Johnny. Ça a été pour moi le premier véritable choc. J'ai eu des cauchemars pendant des nuits, des nuits, des années derrière, et j'ai surtout découvert à ce moment-là que le seul moyen pour me sortir un peu de cette peur, c'était de reproduire et de raconter, euh, et de raconter à d'autres gens, à mes amis, à l'école, d'autres histoires d'horreur. Some of my films have worked better than others, some have failed and some have succeeded. And all I think about is, it was best said by Samuel Beckett, who said, fail again, fail better next time. Cut the bitch! Hmm? What's this? Hmm? Oh, pretty. Mm. Mm. Ah! Ah! 
the hell is that? Look out! Ah! <laughs> Most of the work that all of us do is a failure. It fails in some way to meet our own standards. And the, the best I can try to do is to fail better next time. <laughs> Violence exists in human nature, which is why mankind has always been at war. Some country over here attacks some country over there. Why? Why does America have 80,000 troops in Afghanistan killing people and getting killed? You know, the violence that exists in life isn't even mirrored properly in cinema or on the stage. Uh, but it exists because mankind is born with this violence. It's very disturbing to me. I don't celebrate violence. The world is violent, and America is a violent country and commits casual violence all the time in the name of patriotism and democracy and honor and whatever. But we're just a violent people. Precisely 74% of you shall die. My friend, you suffer from the misplaced optimism of the doomed. This is going to be good. What is? Neither one to shot it. What? What did he say? He said you guys have fucked. You stupid sectioners. There's a tunnel right after Katarina Bridge. A tunnel? Mm hmm. A fucking long one. ピクチャーじゃなきゃボタンが韓国社会で独特な situationだったんだと思うんですけど、いろいろな歴史的な経験を経験してきたんだと思うんですけど、いろいろな歴史的な経験を経験してきたんだと思うんですけど、いろいろ
불안은 저와 되게 친숙해요. 그러니까 제 개인적으로도 사실 한국 사회에 대한 불안, 또 사람에 대한 불안, 주변의 모든 뭐 내가 만드는 영화에 대한 불안 이런 것들이 뭐 수천 가지 불안들이 항상 있고요. 어쩌다 1년 중에 하루 정도 불안한 게 없는 날이 있는데 그때는 아, 왜 이렇게 아무것도 불안하지 않지? 이러면서 되게 불안, 뭔가 불안해야 되는데 음, 불안에 되게 중독돼 있고 그게 제가 일에 집중할 수 있게 해주는 원동력인 것 같기도 하고요. 그래서 어, 그렇다 보니까 자연스럽게 시나리오를 쓰건 영화를 찍건 그런 것들이 되게 밀착해서 표현하고 싶어 하는 것 같고요. Kid, I was scared from cartoons. Uh, you know the way Tom like uh, finds the vanishing cream that Jerry uses. He looks at the camera and then he has an evil smile. That scene was deleted in our VHS because like my parents would find me crying in front of that every time. I've always played dual roles in all of my horror films. It's really bizarre. I played both sides of my nature. I just don't, uh, I think, par hasard, I have no idea how this happened. But duality always has great drama, doesn't it? I mean, you've got to have conflict and you've got to have duality. You just don't want to look at an evil goddess all the time and you don't want to look at, uh, you know, a, li a little princess in a fairy tale all the time. Actually, the evil goddess is more interesting. Yes, she wanted to kill me. Quick, Andre, do something before it's too late. I couldn't do it. Quickly. Yes, yes, you're right. We must destroy her forever. And I know how it can be done. Don't look, Katya. It's horrible, but I must do it. Mario Bava is a very conservative man and very shy and very internalized. And um, the set, in my recollection, I think all, nobody could wear any color, including everybody on the crew. <laughs> he wanted to have this very gothic, dark, tomb-like atmosphere. And it reached so many people, especially uh, young people, on such a subliminal, deep level. This on a sort of this, this beauty and anxiety coupled together. And especially with pre-adolescent boys who are hypnotized by the S&M aspect of it, I suppose. You know, death and beauty. Beauty and the beast.
shaved yesterday, and I've had laser eye surgery, and I have hearing aids that are very, these are like, this is a computer. It's very sophisticated, and it gives me incredible control over my hearing. And it also gives me hearing that I would not have a hundred years ago. I would be very deaf right now. And now I can hear very well. So um, I, I, my body's modified, you know, <laughs> very modified. It's just not obvious, but it's true. No, 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 I don't accept that. There must be something we can do, you know, somebody we can go to, a test that can be done. No! Um, I won't be just another tumorous bore talking endlessly about his hair falling out and his lost lymph nodes. Well, then what do you want me to do? Why did you call me? Human life, a very complex crystal with many faces, many facets, and I now I'm looking this way, now I'm looking this way, now I'm looking this way, but it's the same crystal, you know. So to me, it's not really an evolution in that in that sense, you know. It's it's, uh, uh, and I don't think that fear is really, it's it's not the thing that drives me, you know. It's not. It's true that often you're putting things on screen that you are, you you hope will never be in your life. But it doesn't mean that you're doing it out of fear. It's, it's really, it's like science. I mean, it's curiosity. Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness some scenes from the next attraction to play this theater. This picture, truly one of the most unusual ever filmed, contains scenes which under no circumstances should be viewed by anyone with a heart condition or anyone who is easily upset. We urgently recommend that if you are such a person, or the parent of a young or impressionable child now in attendance, that you and the child leave the auditorium for the next 90 seconds. Shall we get started? I thought you said you weren't going to scream. <laughs> No one had ever made a movie in which people died with their eyes open. No one ever made a movie in which somebody reaches into a girl's chest and pulls out her heart, or tears out the brains, or saws off a leg, or pulls out the tongue. So it was outrageous, and the concept was outrageous, and I had no notion whether anybody would play it, but I did know that no one had made a movie of that type before. So, yes, Blood Feast was totally experimental. But it, as, it, as history has shown, I think, it worked out. that I've seen in news footage of the Vietnam War that were far more, because they're realistic. Everyone knows that our movies are fantasy, but if I am watching an execution on the news, if I am watching a battle scene with bodies dropping, that is not entertainment. That is the harshest, most brutal kind of reality. So if I have my choice for what my children should see, I would rather have, rather have them see fantasy than that kind of reality. But we can't control it anymore. Because school children go to school and shoot their other children in school. That's how society either evolves 
or devolves. It's from Ollie. I go home? In Peru, we found this village that's the last village on the Amazon. And they, they're so cut off that you, they, they don't have a boat that most people have never left the village. So most people, they're farmers. They don't look like they do in the movie. Um, but most people had never seen a movie before. So our Peruvian producer said we'd have to go there with a television and a generator and show them a movie. And they called me two weeks later. They said, great, we showed them a movie. They loved it. I said, what did you show? Star Wars, Wizard of Oz? They said, Cannibal Holocaust. I said, you showed Cannibal Holocaust, the most violent movie ever made. To the, what about the children? They said, yeah, the children. No, they thought it was a comedy. Don't worry. Um, and they showed it to them because they wanted to show them the worst case scenario. He's changing reels. All right. Move in tight. Tight. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Oh, good Lord. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's horrible. I can't understand the reason for such cruelty. It must have something to do with some obscure sexual writer. With the almost profound respect these primitives have for virginity. Ça c'est plus facile à faire. Pas besoin de. Elle, la, la fille était fantastique. Keep filming, Mark. I'll cover you. You got it. Right down to the last foot. sono molto più immediato creativo cioè non ho bisogno di masturbazioni in certe cose non sono come attori alla De Niro che se devono fare un film grosso si ingrassano per sei mesi o devono andare a parlare il dialetto calabrese vanno un anno in Calabria sono rosselliniano dove veramente l'improvvisazione è la, la, la nostra dote e questo fa sì che immediatamente, basta che sto due giorni in mezzo a giungla e capisco quello che devo mangiare, quello che devo bere, quello che devo fare per, per sopravvivere.
Le cannibalisme, finalement, c'est un geste qui est presque punk. C'est-à-dire que ce n'est plus appartenir à cette société-là, redevenir un animal pour quand même finir par aboutir à une vraie construction identitaire, mais qui n'appartient qu'à soi. J'ai plus de tendresse pour votre ami que pour vous. L'école, pour lui, elle n'est pas acquise. Il doit se battre pour y rester. Alors que vous, enfant prodigue, hein, vous débarquez, vous donnez de bourdon à mes élèves, dont certains ont tout fait d'abandonner plutôt que d'avoir à se comparer à vous. Votre présence n'est pas indispensable. Et pire, elle pourrait nous priver d'excellents docteurs. Bon, il va sans dire que je préférais que ce soit votre classement qui soit rétrogradé hein, plutôt que celui de votre ami. C'est lui. When I am trying to think of a story or a thing that's out there and I wonder what scares me, and I specifically sit at a table or lay awake in bed for hours at a time and try and use my imagination to get at what frightens me, I occasionally can. That's the one point in the process where I've become frightened. Hey, Ash, I guessed the card right. Yeah, truly amazing, Linda. I don't know, I don't know, but I think it's really some sort of extra sense or something, you know, like ESP? Okay, try this. Okay, um, it's a seven. I don't believe it! Of spades. <laughs> Queen of spades. Four of hearts. Eight of spades. Two of spades. Jack of diamonds. Jack of clubs. <laughs> Disturbed our sleep, awakened us from our ancient slumber. <laughs> you will die! When I write these horror films, I wondered what a demon would want, if there really could be a demon, and how they, what, what they would really like if they came here on Earth, how they would want to torture us, how they'd want to be a blasphemy in the eyes of God, and it was a little frightening to me. <laughs> は、L'assassin du giallo est très iconographique, il est habillé tout en cuir noir, il tue à l'arme blanche. Et il y a toute une imagerie qui, qui, qui peut être réutilisée d'une autre manière, et c'est ce qu'on essaye de faire dans nos films. Killer is a cool movie because it is what it is, man. You know what I mean? It's the driller killer, a guy who kills people with a drill.
you know, it's one thing show, making a movie. It's another thing making a movie for somebody who pays money. Like when people say, do you go to the theater, what do I expect? When I pay 10 euro to see a movie, I expect Jesus Christ to come into the, you know what I mean? If I'm going to spend 10 euro, believe me, there's a lot of shit I could buy for 10 euro. Take your clothes off. Chaser was produced by these two tennis playing Hollywood jerk offs. Two guys who were walked around in driving uh, Porsches and wearing white shorts and tennis rackets. Two guys. And they totally ruined the film. Yeah, that was a humiliation that I didn't kill both these guys. Yeah, that was my last humiliation. <laughs> See before you a man who lived for centuries, kept alive by the blood of innocent people. Je tremblais de peur parce que les scènes sont tenues sérieusement. Quand apparaît François Schneider, c'est c'est le personnage qui marche comme ça. Enfin, c'est un bon Dracula, c'est la grande cape. Le loup-garou, c'est les griffes. Il y avait des trucages magnifiques. Les poils lui poussaient. Enfin, etc. Et ce qui m'exaspérait, c'est qu'à côté de moi, ma mère riait beaucoup parce que, évidemment, bon, à un certain degré, ces films-là, c'est très drôle. un scandale affreux. Les gens hurlaient dans la salle, ils jetaient des objets sur l'écran, euh, les caissières me disaient « restez pas là, il y a des gens qui vous cherchent pour vous casser la gueule ». Enfin, ça, ça a été terrible. that it deals with the subject that none of us want to talk about, which is death. You know, something we think about all the time, but we never talk about it. And uh, horror is a way, I think Stephen King put it the best, he said horror is a way, it's a, it's a rehearsal for our own deaths. And uh, so it's a way to examine uh, that and, to, and to, in a way to conquer death. You know, when the movie is over, you feel very grateful to be alive.
guest, doctor. It's Herbert West. What are you thinking? How do you feel? You? What is important is that the audience cares about what they're seeing and that they're shocked by what they see sometimes. I think you have to wake people up. I think that uh, we will go through life half asleep most of the time. And so uh, sometimes you have to shock people to kind of get their attention. to life. I, I don't think this administration would have a chance. Uh, and, and so, you know, that's really what it's about, that sort of revolution, and gradually. And, you know, it's through this mythology, of course, but the idea of, you know, getting another chance, come back to life, wake up. Só os bons vão embora, os maus ficam. De repente, dentro do caixão, o morto começou a se mexer. Mexendo as mãos, levantando-se, cheio de algodão no nariz e nas orelhas. Olhamos para trás, não ficou ninguém, ficou só eu e os três garotos. Aí ele queria saber o que aconteceu. Nós falamos da ingenuidade, que possivelmente nós rasamos e ele voltou. Aí entrou o padre, vai de reto, Satanás. O delegado tirou o revólver, mas logo soubemos que ele não tinha morrido, ele tinha tido catalepsia. <risos> as meninas com as aranhas, quando eu comecei a filmar sem fazer teste, elas filmaram algumas cenas e depois pularam fora, quando foram a hora das aranhas. Então, antes de eu prosseguir depois, perdi aquele filme, aí eu passava ela para um teste, aquilo que era chamado teste de coragem. Eu passava as meninas por teste com cobras, com aranhas, penduradas, coisa, levava no cemitério, ficava enterrada num caixão. E assim eu fazia as aprovações dos meus atores. Klaus, um, wie alt bist du? Acht. Du siehst älter aus. Ich bin acht. Juhu! Ja. 
gender-wise, he's a bit loose, it could be a man or a woman or some say Angela Merkel with a wig or something. So it's a, just a, a, a character that you cannot really place. And I think that's interesting because there's something kind of funny, uh, sweet, I think he's very sweet, but also uh, something that's unnerving or that makes you a bit uncomfortable about him. <laughs> そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、そのオーダーが来て、
Oh, my God, don't stop now. I shot The Little Shop of Horrors in two days and a night in a set that had been built for another film. And I did it really more as a joke than anything else, just to see if I could do it. We started at 8 o'clock in the morning. We shot Thursday and Friday, Thursday morning at 8 o'clock. At 8.30, the assistant director announced, we are hopelessly beyond, behind schedule. Feed me! Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here, my dirty laundry? Well, goodbye, Dr. Farr. You may have been a crummy dentist, but you were a nice fella. When I read my email, I get a lot of spam about, you know, enlarge your penis, and here's Viagra, and, you know, it's not, it's, it's a, to me, that's a, that's a, um, the sexuality is, that, that's just an extension, once again, of, of, of normal sexuality, you know? And because sexuality means competition, not just with humans, but in nature. There's a great, it's part of evolution, really, and that's part of what Charles Darwin saw, that there's incredible competition for sexual, uh, for reproduction, really, that your genetic structure should be the one that carries on. So if you're more sexually powerful, then you have, uh, you have uh, a victory, genetically. That even dying is an act of eroticism. That talking is sexual. That breathing is sexual. That even to physically exist is sexual. And I believe him. And we make love Beautifully. Much of art and culture and religion is an evasion of that, is an attempt to deny that death is real. You say, well, you die, but you're not really dead, you're still around somewhere, you know. To me, that's very weak, and, and it's just sim simply not true. To me, it's obvious that when we die, we are finished, you know. Um, we are totally physical, we are animals, and, and it's, to me it's much stronger and better to accept that and then live life out of that than out of some fantasy of an afterlife. <laughs>